for some dirt therapy. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna show you how to take a smart lock front diff apart. Uh, when I take a diff out, I normally always take this actuator off um, before I even try to get it out of the frame. So you have a T30 here and some T30s across the bottom. The actuator, um, if four wheel drive is off, it's kicked back to where it needs to be. If it's on, it's, that's what's rotating it. And the computer is telling it, and the drive system is telling it to, to give it more, which gives more clutch, which makes it lock up more. I'll show you that here in a second. So I take that off while I'm taking it out of the frame. You can just set it off to the side. I've already taken some bolts out just to make it a little bit faster. Um, go to the side with your little vent tube. Take it off first as far as taking it out. When you're putting it back together, you'll put it back together in first and then put the other side. It just makes it easier to line some things up. You're only going to need a 12 millimeter for these bolts, a T30 for these little bolts whenever you take this actuator off, and then a 14 for the uh, ring gear. So there's pry spots, one right here, and one right here, and then there's a tab right here. You always look for those tabs because that's what you push on. You don't want to get a gap and then shove a screwdriver in the gasket surface. Uh, you end up messing it up. So you just pry on here. You can pry on here, pry up a little bit. Nope, drain the fluid first. And sometimes you have to get in here and wiggle it. Tap it with a hammer. It's a tight fit because this case is fitting around a bearing. I'll pry it up, get it loose. Try to leave it behind. We're only taking the cap off. There's your cap. Uh, there is an O-ring around here. You can get new O-rings. They also, uh, this side not so much. The other side, yes. They also use like a little a bead of silicone, moto bond. Uh, there's numerous different kinds. You want a kind of a thicker glue to put right here. So an RTV type glue, that's what works. And you have your your ring and pinion gear. This side's easy. It just pulls straight out. It just pulls out like that. Now you do have some thrust washers. You have a big one for right here that goes against it goes against uh, to keep it off the case itself. And you have a smaller one that fits on right here. This small one goes against this bearing. This other one goes Kind of just a, a little guide against the case so it doesn't wear the case out. So don't forget where your washers went. There's only four, so they kind of only go in one spot. So put your washers off. And you have your complete assembly here. And I'll show you how to take that apart. Because that's where we have our broken pieces inside here, the spider gears. That's what is semi-common to break depending on how you drive. And you can flip it over. Same thing, they have little pry tabs. You can kind of pry up on it and break it loose. Hit up, hit it, hit the little tabs. Try not to hit anything else. Never mind that. If I didn't flip it on its side, it wouldn't have fell out. This little guy's being a booger. So that bearing sits there. That's for the clutch pack. This case comes off, that's basically it. This is a ball and ramp setup. I'll show you how that 
actually works. On this side, it's easier to take all this out. And then when you're going back together, put your ring gear in and you can set this on because it's kind of splined. This bearing goes right here against the clutch pack. It goes in between the clutch pack and the pressure plate, the ball and ramp right here. And this whole clutch pack comes out. And I can show you how that works too. And then under it is a fin thrush, thrush, uh, a fin thrust washer and then our normal washer. So like I said, it's easier once you get the ring gear in to put these back on. They'll, it'll hold themselves in place and then you slide the clutch pack back on. But in short, that's all. That's all there is to it. It's not a lot to it as far as this part. As far as the spider gears, well, that's another animal. All right, so I'll show you how I do this. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the right way. It's not necessarily the wrong way. This ring is a retainer there's holes in between each of these holes there's a hole right there that's that hole is holding a pin in which holds the spider gears inside the way you get this retainer off is there's little tabs right there you just bend them out and the whole retainer slides off i would advise to leave it on at first because otherwise you could mar up this little drum and such as that. So you can leave it on, put it in a vise, and you're, you're just getting it snug, you know, no big deal. Just, just to hold it, you can even use if you're nervous about your vise and gripping and stuff, quite simply, you can just get some aluminum angle iron just like that, and you've instantly made a set of soft jaws. And just get it snug. Now you, you need to get these off to be able to get to the bolts that hold the ring gear and all the hub together. Um, you can see it's, it's loose, it's supposed to be like that. Easiest way I found to do it, this is pretty thick, you're not really gonna bend it and it's not crazy tight. Um, just get a little screwdriver And then just work your way around. Once you get a little gap in it, you can take two screwdrivers and kind of just wiggle them together. Like I say, it's not crazy tight. It's just snug. All this is doing is the sensor is picking up all these teeth and telling whether it's slipping or whether it's rotating as it should. The bearing... Now there are bearing clamp things that go under. The problem is the bearing is lower than the ring gear here. So kind of the same thing. You need to get something under there. You know, and it's, it's a little tighter. And what, what's actually funny is I found this ax. It's got a really thin face on it. The ax actually works pretty good. Just work your way around, try to get it started. Once you actually get it up just a little bit where the screwdrivers will fit, you can kind of just wiggle it back and forth. And it's it's a semi-pressed fit. I mean, it's tight, but it's not crazy tight.
kind of started. You just work two screwdrivers together. Watch for the low spots. It takes a little bit of pressure, but nothing, nothing crazy. And now I'll catch crap in the comments like that's not how you do it. Well, that's how I do it, so whatever. Wiggle it one side at a time. And there it is. So now the bearing's off. Now you can get to your bolts to actually take the hub apart. Make sure it's nice and snug still on there. These are a 14. They're locked tight in there. This doesn't just pop out uh, because there's dowel pins and they're a fairly snug fit so that's kind of what helps everything line up uh, in short as you can see if you were clamping right here your surface is bigger than what you're clamping on so you need to basically just tap the center, but leave the ring gear behind. That's why we have our aluminum on here. Kind of line it up that way. It'll, the hub will come out, but the ring gear will stay. And it doesn't take a, it doesn't take a whole heap of pressure. And I'm not hitting it crazy hard, but a dead blow takes a lot of your, your hit out. Take your ring gear off. So I was talking about the the dowels. They're what they're snug, so they hold it all together. And then you have your hub assembly. So these two hubs here and here, they are different. This one's a little bit longer. It has a taper on it for the little sensor ring to snug against. That's what breaks. It's the gears on the hub itself. Now, the spider gears will break also. Something's got to give. But that's what you're breaking. That's how you replace that. That's how you get this apart. So now, I'll show you all right quick how to get this apart. It's not incredibly hard. You can just barely snug just enough to hold it take a little screwdriver and you can see that little tab you just got to bend it out you know it doesn't take much just a little bit like that per side and once it's kind of bent out almost once it's been out this piece slides off retainer ring slides off uh, depending on your tabs you see when the tooth broke it kind of ground on a little bit it's not crazy but the little tabs could get weak if you bend them too much so you might want to make sure to order a new one of these there's companies that make a little bit heavier ones uh, whatever it's just a little retainer tab and then for the spider gears themselves you can see all the gears you have your pins so one pin goes all the way through. The other two pins meet at halfway and stop because the pin's stopping them. And then that retainer ring is holding these pins. So you can kind of, okay, so that one doesn't go, but this one will. So in short, you can push this pin all the way out. do 
that, you can push these pins out enough to pull them out. They're half, half the length, basically. And you push this one out, just like that. And now, all this is ready to fall out. You can, hardest part is getting the retainer itself, the center block. Once the center block comes out, just like that, um, and it, it doesn't matter which way it goes. They're the same size holes, uh, same size uh, diameter pins, the gears, all that kind of stuff. Everything, everything's the same, so it's fine. And you just shake them, and there's your gears. As you can see, some of these gears are okay. That one's got a little, a little ding on it. That's from this one breaking. Something had to give. So, and this one's got a ding. So this, this diff will get four new gears and two new hubs. This hub and then the hub from the other side. The hub from the other side is pretty much fine. So you can keep it as a spare. But it's, that's how you get it out. It's not incredibly hard. I just figured I'd make a video because I didn't see anyone else had made a video on how this smart lock comes apart. So just remember your short side came from inside. Your short side was here with this. Short side has the, the spline side goes to the clutch. Smooth side goes to the ring gear. So to show you how this clutch pack works. So it comes apart in a short two pieces and the clutch discs. So you got a ring that you pop out. Everything comes out together. So you have your outer, which is basically your basket. And then you have your inner, which is your hub. So they spin within each other until the ramp, ball ramp pressure plate puts pressure against the plates themselves and it just creates a bind, so it all turns together. So when you're in tool drive or uh, trail, it'll have a little bit of slip until the sensor here and on the other side detects slip, and it'll add some clutch, which in turn will put pressure on the plates, and they'll go from slipping separately to starting to grab together. So, really quickly now we got a plate stuck in there so your outer plates are teethed to the outer and then your hub sits in the middle and your inner plates are teethed to the inner that's how they're available they're able to twist and then when you add pressure, it binds them all together, you know, and then they all go together. All right, so put the clutch pack back together. Uh, just a note, they're steel on steel, where a bike it's steels and fibers. Uh, there's 17 discs, 17 outers, and I think 16 or 17 inners. Um, but in short, it's all back together. This little ring retainer, make sure when you put it back in, make sure it's tucked in under the teeth all the way around. Otherwise, it's all would pop out. Uh, if you were ever gassing on it four-wheel drive pretty hard, and the passenger tire was basically not spinning, like slipping, uh, kind of a slip. It's either probably a broken spider gear or a clutch pack could be worn. If you pulled the discs and they were blue, yeah, they're toast. Um, you shouldn't really ever break this part. Uh, spider gears break from time to time. They only broke because I'm running a big, bigger, stickier tire, King of the Hammers, and I landed with the gas on. I mean, it's purely my fault. But that's how your clutch pack works. 
All right, so I showed you how the hub comes apart that has the spider gears and all that kind of stuff. Um, in short, you do the opposite and put it all back together. Your splines out will go in first. And then you'll put your spider gears in one at a time until all four of them are in. And then your square will go in the center. Once they're in there, that, that's kind of all it does. Um, then you'll go your smaller side holes and just get them till they line up. You put your long pin in and it's, you know, you just gotta mess with it. Put the long pin in, it's all the way, all the way through. Then you put your short pins in the opposite side, per side. The reason I said to leave the retainer ring on here, I did this for by accident. I forgot to put the aluminum jaws on there. When I clamped it right here with the vise, it made a slight little burr and the pin wouldn't go in, so I just had to file it very easily. So that's why it's kind of smart to leave that retainer on there. Also, aluminum soft jaws help. And your last pin, it's all in there. Then you put your, and you'll throw your retainer on. The retainer goes on just like that. It'll wind until the retainers go into the big holes. And then once that's all clamped, you'll slide your gear on, your, your new hub gear. And then your ring gear will go on and it will, you'll line up your dowels wherever they go. can actually slide that gear in there or let it fall. And you'll line up your dowels with your holes. Remember, it was a, it was a snug fit to get it off. So it's gonna be a snug fit to get it back on. Take a big socket of some sort that fits around this but won't hit this. Tap it down on there until it's snug. And then take your bolts, new Loctite, preferably new bolts if you have them. If not, that's fine, just use Loctite. Make sure you start them good by hand and with just a ratchet, you know, nice and easy. Make sure they all start nice and then work your way around to seat it. And then your whole, basically ring gear hub assembly will be together. Um, and now we go into the clutch. So this here basically is a ball and ramp setup. Not incredibly hard. Take this spring, pop it off. This pressure plate comes off. As you can see, it's got grooves in it. That's where those ball bearings ride. So those grooves, I don't know if you can tell, they're slightly ramped. They're deep here, but shallow here. So when it cranks on it, it cranks outward. It gives a, a pushing pressure and it pushes against the clutch, which therefore makes the, dry, the passenger side wheel grab more. So you have a ball and ramp on this side. And then on the case itself, same thing. This side's deeper than this side. So it's slightly ramped. So they're ramped together to get the very most rise out of it they can in just like an eighth of a pull. Don't worry about all this. So you can take it out and clean it. Just set the balls back in there. You set the gear back in there, exactly where it goes. Uh, it really only goes one spot and it's pretty snug around that case. But once you set it in there, it'll clock all the way until it hits a stopper. Once it's hit that stopper, you just put the spring back on. And that's all there is to it. A very simple setup. Um, but as I said, 
when the, the little motor comes in right here, that gear drive, it gears and twists just like now that. You got your ring gear and spider gear pack all back together. Uh, you torque all your bolts, new Loctite, push the bearing back on, push this sensor ring back on. Don't forget to put your washers on, your thrust washers. Smaller one goes right there, the bigger one goes in here. Easiest way is to leave the case on its side. Also a note, there is a bearing in here, a needle bearing and a bearing in here, and a seal. Uh, you gotta ruin that seal to get it out. There's nothing wrong with it on this one, so I'm not taking it apart. And behind this, there's actually um, a, uh, a spanner nut, so you have to have a special tool to get it out. Um, but I don't need to replace that, so take it, just slide it in from the side. That way the washers don't fall off. You can lean it on your clutch pack or whatever. And then put your case on. It only goes on one way, big gap right here. Doesn't hurt to put a little grease on your seal. Uh, just to make sure it slides over the axle hub really easily and so remember this is going on that bearing and fitting in the case so it's going to be a, a relatively snug fit and the lineup needs to be correct and all that kind of stuff once you get it fairly close just little taps Nothing crazy hard so that case is on we'll just throw two, two bolts in to hold it to go and get on to the other side let's get her snug so I can show you all how it goes I'll flip your your case over now these washers I was talking about you have your your little flimsy um, thrust washer will go right here and you got a bigger thicker one to hold it to go right over it this is why I say do the other side first because now it'll sit there and hold itself your clutch pack slides on And the clutch back should sit flush. If anything, take off, twist just your inner hub. basically trying to get the hub twisted but now it sits nice and flush so once your clutch hub's in then you'll put your thrust washer on then you put your bearing on you want to have cleaned all this surface really good razor blade brake clean contact cleaner whatever clean this surface really good even dig out the little grooves right here and you'll want to apply a new coat of RTV gasket glue of some sort on there. Once your gasket glue's all on there, then press it all back together. The side fits relatively easily. Then you'll run all your bolts in. have a freshly rebuilt diff um, if you needed to replace spider gears a clutch pack bearings in short that's how you do it so hope you learned something get out there and get riding